In 1893, having spent two years in Tahiti in the South Pacific, Gauguin returned to Paris, eager to sell some of the work he had made there. Although Gauguin's paintings made in the South Pacific mix reality and invention, here he is working in his Paris studio. Day of the Gods is a brilliantly colored souvenir, a memory of his voyage, conjured up for a Paris audience. The painting's composition is symmetrical and decorative and separates out the exotic cosmology of Tahiti from the natural world. The three figures with the female bather in the center may represent birth, life, and death. Behind them, women bring a tray of offerings to Hina, the ancient Polynesian moon goddess and co-creator of the universe. The area to the right of the goddess seems devoted to love and sensuality. Gauguin had gone to Tahiti in search of inspiration in the form of a simple ancient culture. He was keenly disappointed to discover that French colonialism had all but erased the old beliefs. Gauguin had to search anthropological texts for Polynesian legends and supplement his own sketches with images from books and photographs to create the mysterious semi-imaginary world in his paintings. In the late 1880s, the French artist Paul Gauguin dreamed of moving to some distant exotic place where he and his art could flourish, free from what he experienced as the taint of modern civilization. At the 1889 Universal Exhibition in Paris, he saw displays of art and dancing from several non-Western cultures, including Java. Entranced by these and by fantasies of artistic rebirth and easy living in one of France's colonial territories, he made plans to settle abroad and establish what he called a studio of the tropics. After much deliberation, Gauguin finally decided on Tahiti and planned his departure. This painting was made a few months after Gauguin's arrival in Tahiti in 1891. The idyllic landscape is filled with lush vegetation that nourishes and protects the people who live in the dwellings nearby. Beyond the figure in red, for instance, is a row of banana trees. At the painting's left side is a tall tree whose bark is tinged with violet. This is a hotu, whose pods and flowers were used by local people as remedies. He often gave his works Tahitian titles to enhance their sense of mysterious exoticism for the European audience he intended should see and purchase his work. At the lower left, Goga inscribed the Tahitian words Te Rau Rai meaning the big tree. Paul Gauguin painted this young Tahitian woman in 1893. He had left Paris for the South Pacific two years earlier in search of what he called a primitive past. This painting depicts Gauguin's Tahitian companion, Tehamana. She wears a modest dress of the kind provided by Catholic missionaries. The fragrant flowers in her hair signal the very sensuality that the dress was intended to obscure.
In the fall of 1888, Paul Gauguin lived briefly with Vincent van Gogh in his yellow house in the small Provençal town of Arles. There he painted this picture of women walking through a park in the bitter Mistral wind. Douglas Struick, president and Eloise W. Martin director of the Art Institute of Chicago. We don't see the horizon. We don't see sky. It's as if Gauguin was looking from above down below. And indeed, it was a perspective like this that Gauguin would have had, looking from his bedroom across the street in the Yellow House onto the park. It's not only the women of Arles who are wrapped against the cold, it's also the plants in the park. And we see the two yellow cones, which are protecting the bushes against the winter frost. And a strange sense of melancholy pervades the picture. The strangeness is enhanced by the green form in the painting's lower left corner. The bush seems to read like a face, as if there was some watchful presence in the park, unbeknownst to the women who pass by. We do know that this picture was painted at a time when there were great tensions between Gauguin and Van Gogh. 